Hello science fans and welcome to Shiensha. Why do we go hungry? Why do we even get bored? Why did we evolve to have religion? Why is makeup part of human culture? Why are babies so cute? Why do we think that aliens exist? Why do we ask questions? The Shiensha Why series will dissect some of our most head-scratching why questions teasing out the scientific principles from historical records, conspiracy theories, and mass media. Join us in today's episode where we ask the question, Why makeup? Media would have you believe that the YouTube beauty community is filled with hate, drama, and controversy. But it cannot be denied that both YouTube and social media have helped influence a next generation of young individuals across the gender spectrum to be interested in makeup and use it as a means to express their individuality. Going beyond a perceived frivolous tradition, it is now a mechanism for individuals of all genders to assert their personality, showcase creativity, and celebrate the beauty of colors on every skin color. In this channel, we've talked about the ancient history of makeup its chemical composition, and its impact to your health and the environment. But did you know that about a hundred years ago, makeup was exclusively worn by movie stars and musicians? But despite their being limited consumers at the time, some major advancements were made in the cosmetic industry. Max Factor, yes, he's a human, founded his own lab in 1909 to create makeup for the stars. And the first metal tube of lipstick was invented in 1915. These technological developments affected the preferred makeup of that time. Throughout the decade, women who wore makeup preferred pale powdered skin and stained lips. And this aesthetic even made its way to the Philippines, mostly because despite our brown skin, we wanted to be pale so as to be similar to the colonizers that have stayed in our country for more than 300 years. And because complexion products were still largely associated with movie stars at the time, items like face powder and cream rouge compacts were popular. And as we move on to the 1920s, there was a general push and pull between trying to look natural as befits a general Christian culture or to emulate the looks of movie stars. And boy, did women take some liberties, especially with their lips. The ideal face of makeup in the 20s was never complete without red lipstick, which was often applied in a rounded shape on the bottom lip and sharply on the top to accentuate the cupid's bow. And as the world moved into the 1930s and as political tensions started to go up, less became more. The ideal face of makeup back then was powdered skin with less rouge. From there, women typically applied petroleum jelly or olive oil to their eyelids to create a glossy effect, and then enhance their eyelashes with dark henna. Still, they avoided making their lashes too thick. To tie everything together, women generally plucked their eyebrows in such that it would have a high arc and winged out edges. Some women even shave their eyebrows out completely and draw in a very thin line. That's certainly how my mom did it. Cosmetics in the 1940s were often difficult to get hold of due to war rationing and were taxed heavily in a number of countries as a luxury item. And yet, women were still expected to wear makeup. Lipstick was favored by government officials in the 1940s. They were considered a morale booster for women living through the war. So, back then, the ideal face of makeup was nothing without red lipstick. Women aimed to look glamorous in the 1950s and piled on heavy products to achieve a flawless look. For example, people commonly wore cream foundations underneath powder. Women started wearing rouge on the apples of their cheeks once more, and to add more to the glamour, they also added a little wing at the edges of their eyeliners. Mascara became popular during this time also, but it was only applied to the upper lashes. But in the 60s, that's when eye makeup took center stage. The ideal face of makeup at the time consisted of opaque eyeshadow in pastel shades. Some women covered their entire lids with color, while others applied shadow through a technique called cut crease 
that are still popular until today. For a while, makeup was used to impose beauty stereotypes and was certainly used to oppress by creating homogenous standards of beauty. But this changed in the 1970s. Many women in the 70s participated in the women's liberation movement and commonly rejected beauty stereotypes. To fight back at the sexism they often faced, those who wore makeup aimed to look natural. And of course, cosmetic brands took notice of the trend. It was during this time when products labeled barely there or invisible started to appear and only promised to create the illusion of glowing skin. It was also during this decade when glamorous eye makeup started to disappear. Throughout most of the 1900s, beauty products were created solely for women with light complexions. But in the 70s, an influx of new cosmetic brands brought darker shades to the market. And from there, makeup trends have started to become even more inclusive. Makeup brands are now conscious about providing pigments for all skin color and are moving towards even creating cruelty-free products. Apart from that, we have available makeup materials that would highlight our natural looks, but also provide opportunities to change up our entire face if we wanted to. With these amazing movements within the beauty community within the last 100 years, why has human society gravitated towards wearing makeup in the first place? Hmm, let's hear what science has to say. An estimated 26% of Filipinas do not like to leave their homes without makeup on. And research shows there are two primary reasons why women feel the need to wear makeup. The first reason is camouflage. Camouflage, also called cryptic coloration, is a defense mechanism or tactic that organisms use to disguise their appearance, usually to blend in with their surroundings. Organisms use camouflage to mask their location, identity, or movement. And in the case of humans, research indicates that women who are feeling anxious or insecure about their skin or certain facets of their appearance tend to use makeup as a means to appear less noticeable. In contrast, the second common reason is seduction. Women who want to be noticeably more attractive tend to use makeup to appear more confident, sociable, and assertive. And now for those 26% of Filipinas and close to 50% of women all over the world may have feelings that if they show their natural face, they won't be able to accomplish their goals and they will be treated differently. It turns out there is science to back up the fears driving a lot of us to wear makeup every day. Society drills into us, even from a young age, that to be successful and happy, we need to be pretty and the basis for that isn't entirely cultural. It may not be fair, but according to studies of the Association for Psychological Science, attractive people are treated more favorably in every aspect of life from dating, to school, from getting jobs, to even criminal trials. And this actually has a biological basis. We've talked about the relationship of symmetry and attractiveness before in a Scientia video titled Science of Love, Infatuation. I'll put the link at the end of this video and also at the description box below. And since symmetry plays a significant role in appearing more attractive, makeup helps this by evening out the skin tone and allowing for contouring. Eyeliner and lip liner also can make our facial features appear more symmetrical. Women also naturally tend to have darker lips and skin around the eyes. So, our brains subconsciously note that as a sign of femininity. The more contrast between a woman's eyes and lips and her skin tone, the more feminine and thus evolutionarily attractive she appears to be. And thus, Lipstick and eyeshadow has become makeup staples. So okay, makeup is a tool to make you appear more biologically attractive. The next question is, how do you make the most of it? If makeup isn't your thing at all, or there are some mornings when you wake up and don't feel like you have the time or energy to put your face on, follow this one tip if you are going somewhere where other people's impression of you matters. Wear concealer or foundation. Research shows that foundation is the cosmetic that has the biggest impact on how women are perceived. 
foundation can conceal skin tone discolorations, tired eye bags, and blemishes that can make you look tired, sickly, and generally uninterested and unfit for work or the activity you set out to do. And as unfair as this may sound, robust research indicates that women who wore makeup to work, particularly because they look more confident and in control, have higher earnings and promotion potential. At the end of the day, makeup does more than alter a woman's attractiveness. It also plays a role in her ability to form new relationships with other women. Research has indicated three key findings in how straight women perceive other women's makeup. Women rate other women who wear makeup as more dominant. The perception that women who wear makeup are more powerful is grounded on how makeup can be used to highlight and assert our presence. This also plays a role in how makeup is very useful in order for us to have successful careers. On the darker side, probably linked to historical outdated thinking from the 1970s, data suggests that women are more jealous of other women wearing makeup and perceive them as more promiscuous. This is particularly the case for women who wear bold eye makeup and lipsticks. And this is a reflection of the conservative outlook of many faiths, even up to now, and also of our patriarchal society that puts the responsibility in women to reign in their sexuality to avoid distracting men. Luckily, we're in the 21st century and we are well on our way on smashing these harmful stereotypes. And finally, on the lighter but no less important side, women bond faster with other women who wear makeup that is similar to what they themselves wear. We are naturally drawn to people who we perceive to be more similar to us. So, it is no surprise that similarity in makeup tastes can also make bonds of sisterhood happen faster. And so, science has spoken. Makeup trends reflect persisting cultures and attitudes towards women. It can be used to repress our identity and our natural beauty, but it can also be used to highlight our own individuality. Attractiveness, which is grounded on confidence and symmetry, is scientifically proven to help improve your chances of success in life. Makeup increases attractiveness by creating the illusion of perfect symmetry on your face and increasing contrast of the colors of your eyes and your lips to your skin tone that makes you appear more feminine. Wearing makeup affects how women form relationships with other women by altering how dominant they appear, the level of their promiscuity, and how similar they are to other women. And that's it for today's episode of the Y series where we try to answer the question, why makeup? I hope you were able to learn something from our short video today. And if you did, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!